There are a million different brushes you can buy to start painting watercolors. These are the three that I would recommend you start with. I'm Jess Rice. I'm an art teacher and beginners are my specialty. I've been using these three for many, many years and they've gotten me through lots of different paintings. The main one you should purchase is a round brush. I use a round brush to carry lots of pigment and lots of water between my palette and my paper. These come in different sizes from very small, number four, number six, up to very larges, number 20s and number 40s. This is a number 14 round. They come in a different price range from cheap to very expensive. The other brush I like to use is a big flat brush. I use this for skies, for doing lots of grass work in the foregrounds. A square brush or a flat brush doesn't carry as much pigment and water onto the paper. So you're actually not introducing as much water into your paper using a big flat brush. Similar to a flat brush is an angled brush. With an angled brush, you just have just a little bit more control. You've got a nice point that it comes to that you can get into nice little nooks and crannies with, with your tip of your angled brush. Again, it doesn't carry as much paint and water, so you're not introducing as much water into your watercolor as you're painting. To do that, you want to use your round brush. Let's take a look at how each one of those apply paint a little bit differently. Let's start with a round brush. Like I said, a round brush I use basically for carrying lots, lots of water, lots of pigment to my paper. Big round brush. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it on dry paper this time, just so you can see the brush stroke more. Get lots of pigment in my brush. Load my brush all the way up out here. With a big round brush, it carries a lot of water. The nicer the brush, the more pigment it's going to carry. Look at how much pigment that brush is carrying. I can go on and on and on while I'm painting. I can do a big sky with just one long brush stroke. You can see how much paint and water that brush holds. So that's a big round brush. Big flat brush I like to use if I don't want to introduce as much water into my painting. Or maybe I want a little different stroke. Let's mix up a nice blue here, a nice cobalt blue. Mix it up out here in my palette. My brush nice and full. And you'll see that this one doesn't carry as much paint or water. I'm not introducing as much water into my painting. So with my flat brush, I'm probably going to be doing shorter strokes to fill in areas. But I'm not pulling as much water into my painting. The third type is the angled brush. In this one, you have just a little bit more control. I can do nice wide strokes. I can turn the brush on the chisel and do nice little thin strokes. Or I can just use the point to get into fine little areas. With just the point of my brush. Again, I'm not carrying as much pigment and water into my painting. The round brush has a thin tip to it. It gets fat in the middle, that's quite hollow in the middle, and then it comes back down to a tip where it's connected to the barrel of the brush. And that center section where it's all hollow is where all your pigment and water sit. So it'll suck up water and pigment, and it sits in that big cavity that sits in your brush there. That's where it holds all that paint and water. One other thing I want to show you on the type of brushes is the tip. That's another uh, thing that they add into some brushes. This brush has what they call an aquarelle end to it. This brush does not. It's just got a regular rounded handle to it. The aquarelle brushes are used to scrape out things. So I can use that tip then to come back in and scrape areas of my paint out. Say I'm putting in tree trunks or something into my paint. I can use that to scrape paint out. The difference between an expensive brush and a less expensive brush is the quality of the bristles. A high-end brush is made of natural hairs. 
and will give you much more uh, water retention and pigment retention in the bristles. A less expensive brush is made with synthetic fibers or synthetic bristles. Still works well, not quite as expensive, but doesn't load as much water and paint into it. You'll get a lot more paint and water into a natural bristle. The brush that I use all the time are Klinsky Sable brushes. These are the highest end brushes that you can buy. These brushes are a little bit more expensive, but I've had this brush for over 20 years and it still is just as nice as it ever was. Maybe the points are just a little bit rounder, but still pulls lots of paint and water where I want it to, to go. A synthetic brush just doesn't pull as much water and paint over, but I would never be able to buy an expensive Kalinske Sable brush this large, so I have to go with a little bit less expensive one. So there you have it, all the different brushes that I use. I use a nice round, a nice flat, and an angled brush.